Hi, this is Karen at Snickerdoodle Designs. Today we're going to take a look at how to customize a drop shadow in both Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. We're going to be working with this layout created by Lucy Creations and she created this entire layout using only products from our winter commercial use grab bag that is a special during Digital Scrapbooking Weekend at digitalscrapbookingstudio.com. Shadows are a critical part of our layouts. They create a sense of realism, giving depth and dimension to our pages. When we add shadows to our page elements or text or any uh, embellishment on our scrapbook page, we can use shadow styles that Photoshop has included in our software for us. We can use shadow styles that we have purchased, or we can create our own shadows using the software. But today we're going to take a look at how to customize a drop shadow. This is a slightly advanced technique, but it's actually quite easy. I think you'll find it very uh, user friendly. This tutorial was provided as a direct request from one of our studio blog readers. So if you have come to uh, the YouTube from our digital scrapbooking studio blog, head on back over there, leave a comment in the comment section. Let us know what you want to learn about. We always read your comments and we want to provide help to you in whatever way we can as you create your uh, scrapbook pages. When I asked Lou to create this layout, I said, please make sure you use only basic layout so we can use it in this demonstration. And so she has lovely shadows on here. It is really pretty just the way it is. But if you want to take it a step further, that's what we're going to learn how to do today. I am using Photoshop Creative Cloud 2015 today for this tutorial. At the end of it, I will show you how to um, do a workaround in Photoshop Elements because Elements does not have a few of the tools that Photoshop has, which we will be using. So let's go ahead and customize the shadow that Lou has on this uh, beautiful leaf here. And I'm going to show you just a, a real quick trick. She has duplicated this uh, piece of foliage here. So it's actually a two branch piece and Let's merge that so that it's one branch and it just makes it easier to work with. I'm going to right click on the layer to copy her layer style and then I'll turn her layer styles off and merge those two layers. Now if I merge those layers with the drop shadow on, I wouldn't have access to adjusting that drop shadow so that's why I have turned it off. So right click on that to merge them right click on to apply her layer style and now we're back where we started but those are merged together it just makes it a little bit easier to work to customize a layer shadow it needs to be on its own layer so to do that we will right click on either the effects or the drop shadow tab I'm sorry label to access this menu and you see down here it says create layer I'd like to show you though if you are actually on the layer and right click you don't get the same menu so if you don't see this uh, second option that I just showed you, you're probably on the wrong layer. Just come down here. This is not going to highlight or change colors to let you know it's selected, but you'll be in the right area when you see this um, option here. Come down to create layer, and now you see the shadows on its own layer. Here is the foliage, and there's the shadow right there underneath that. And that's what we want to work with. So click on it to make it active. Hit your control T to bring up the transform tool. Move your cursor, cursor inside of the selected area. Right click and come down to warp. Warp will apply a grid around the selection. And this is what we want to do. We want to play with these uh, corner handles here. So we can see that the shadow is coming down into the left. And we want to bring that down just a little bit more. Now I don't like that it's um, further away from the base. Typically if you think about a shadow, that's going to be closer to the base. So we can uh, grab this little nodule right here and move it a little closer to the base, leaving the top part a little bit further down. And I think that looks good. Click OK to commit. Now you can come over and play with your blend modes. You can also play with your um, fill level, your opacity. It will work the same way in this tutorial for this particular um, technique. 
I think the 45% that we have set here is just fine. Um, an additional option, if you find this a little sharp, I don't especially, but you can come up to filter and down to blur and Gaussian blur. And you can see I was playing with this before I had it set at 16.8 pixels and it has applied a little Gaussian blur to that. So let's go ahead and take the preview off. So that's without the blur and that's with the blur. Either way, I think I actually think I'm going to leave it off. I think I like that like it like that. Now, I did do a tutorial just a few weeks ago on Puppet Warp, and I won't go into depth on that, but I'm going to show you just a little trick for uh, making this a little bit more realistic looking for this particular uh, cluster and the shadow that we've all added now. So by clicking on this to make it active, this is the leaf layer. Come up to Edit, Puppet Warp. Up here I have Show Mesh. If you don't want to see that, you can click to turn it off. Uh, let's go ahead and leave it off and I'm going to click where I want the leaves to stay in position and I will click and hold and move the leaf where I want it to be moved and I'd like to bring it down and curve it just a little bit more click OK and now I think that looks a little bit more realistic with the shadow we had on there actually the shadow now is a little hidden so I might even bring it up a little bit that's probably a little bit too much I might even go back and transform that a little bit more in a real life situation I'd probably probably play around with a little little bit more but this gives you an idea of how to go ahead and create that custom shadow now in Photoshop elements you don't have the option to warp and you also don't have the puppet warp option. Here is the um, foliage that Lou has created and I've already merged those just for um, sake of um, expediency. I will go ahead and right click on that to clear her layer style. We don't want that on there. And I'd like to create a blank layer underneath this. To do that I hit control and hold it down while I hit new layer and now you see we have a blank layer underneath the leaf. I'm going to rename that shadow. If I hit control and the thumbnail of the leaf that's going to sell, you know, let me turn those bounding boxes off. There we go. So now we have just the leaf selected. Come back to your, to your make sure you're on your shadow layer and hit edit, fill selection 50% gray. If that's not showing 50% gray, just access that in the down pointing arrow there and click OK. Control D will deselect that leaf. And if I turn the leaf on now, you see we have a gray leaf um, shape, and that's what's going to be our shadow. I turn that back on and make sure we're on our shadow layer. Control T will bring up the transform tool. And when I right click on that, you see we don't have the warp option that we have in Photoshop. Skew and distort work uh, pretty well here. Distort usually is the best option. And you can just pull that down. And sometimes you might have to rotate it a little bit or move this up. Typically what I found um, most useful was to go ahead and click OK on that and then bring up the transform tool again and tilt it just a little bit and just kind of play with it till you get a look that resembles what you want. I'm just looking at this one leaf right here. I would probably go in and erase or mask, whoops, I touched that accidentally and moved it. I would come in here and erase or mask away these particular shadows because they don't fall how this shadow falls. We want the shadows to fall this way. So you might have to do that a couple times when you're using Photoshop Elements. Go ahead then and play with your blend modes, your opacity levels, and your Gaussian blur to get it just how you like. It's a few more steps, but it's definitely workable in Photoshop Elements as well. 
I'd like to invite you to make sure you come back next week because we're going to be using the same layout and we're going to be adding a real snowy effect to it. So here's the original and here is a little snowy effect with a little fog. It looks really cold and I think it's a really cool look. So thanks for stopping by. I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you next week.